All right, now we're going to look at a weak acid and a strong base. Um, now, at the very beginning, so we're going to deal with acetic acid right here. We're starting with 50 mils of acetic acid, 0.1 molar. We're adding in 0.1 molar sodium hydroxide. Now, here's the only thing. The chemistry is the same, except since it's a weak acid, we have to do a Ka problem every time we find one of these endpoints. Okay, so you can see we're going to get really, really good at this Ka stuff and this Kb stuff in this unit because we do this over and over and over again. So at the very beginning, we have zero sodium hydroxide. The only thing we have to influence it is the 0.1 um, of acetic acid. So we do our assumptions, the 5% rule checks out, we get a pH of 2.87, which is still, you know, an acidic environment. Now we're going to go ahead and end the 10 mils. Now we kind of have to do two charts, just like we did earlier. We have to do a stoichiometry chart first to figure out how much I have floating around. Then I'm going to end up doing a um, ice chart. Okay, so that's where this is going to, let me explain where these numbers come from. So here's our still, our initial amount of acetic acid. Okay, I have 50 mils of 0.1 molar. That's not going to change from an initial standpoint, but I'm adding 10 mils of 0.1 sodium hydroxide. So what I have here is the one millimole of sodium hydroxide is going to be totally used up. I'm going to have four millimoles of acetic acid left. I'm also going to have one millimole of the acetate ion floating around. Okay, so I got to take both of those into account. These right here are just my new concentrations because I had 4 millimoles over the 60 mils of total volume, 1 millimole over the 60 mils of total volume. Okay, now you can do this, do this math, but we're still going to end up with minus x's and x's. We're still going to have a Ka chart. Um, and I think the 60s, you know, I think we just canceled those out of the equation so that we end up with x being equal to. 7.2 times 10 to the negative fifth with a pH of 4.14. Again, if you follow, these are the same examples that are in the book, so follow along with them and they'll probably give you more detail in terms of the algebra um, getting worked out, but it then turns into a Ka problem. Okay, then we do the same type of calculation. Now we're going to have 50 mils of sodium hydroxide and 50 mils of the acetic acid, which is what we still started with. So at this point, this is our equivalence point. Now, how do I know it's the equivalence point? Well, because the hydroxide is going to kick in 5 millimoles, it's going to completely react with the 5, millimole, 5 millimoles of acetic acid so that I'm going to have um, neither left, and the only thing that's going to influence this here is the acetate ion. So what we have to do is now treat the acetate ion as a weak base, okay, for putting all this together, and it becomes a weak base problem. So what you have to do is you can use your um, Ka and your Kw values right here to get Kb. Okay, that's what I'm doing here is to get Kb. Then you still set it equal to your equilibrium expression. You Now this time you're going to get a hydroxide value, and it's going to be a pH of, of 8.72. So you'll notice for the equivalence point here, every time you're at the equivalence point with a weak acid and a strong base, the only thing left to influence it is the weak conjugate base of that acid. So it's always going to be slightly basic at the equivalence point for this type of titration. I know, it's a lot. Um, okay, and then we're going to get past the equivalence point. So now the only thing that's going to be left here to influence it is the hydroxide as well as the acetate ion. Um, there are two bases. The first one that's the most important um, is hydroxide because it's strong. So we, at this point, we can just use the hydroxide value to figure it out. You've got 2.5 millimoles. You have your new volume which is 75 mils plus 50 mils. Um, remember, this is a pOH, so you got to remember to subtract it. Um, you're going to get 12.30, and then we're off on that chart. Um, just, just some comparing shapes here. Here is a weak acid, strong acid problem. Remember, the for the strong acid, and it's being titrated by a strong base. So the pH value for the strong acid and strong base is still always going to be 7. I'm sorry, the equivalence point. The equivalence point for a weak acid being titrated with a strong base is always going to be slightly above 7, 
because the only thing left to influence it at the equivalence point is that weak conjugate base. And this just shows you some shapes when the um, weaker the acid that you have of how it's going to cha change the shape of the curve and how it's going to um, start at higher and different values and change the equivalence point. So there's just some pattern stuff here um, that you should you know, be familiar with. Um, and this is just the summary of a weak base and a strong acid. Again, it's the same type of math, but now we've got a weak base being titrated with a strong acid. Summary here, you start out basic, um, you get, you go down, you go down, then at the equivalence point, which is right here, um, you end up with your pH value is going to be slightly below, is going to be slightly acidic. I think this is the equivalence point. I'm not sure. I'll have to check that and get back with you. But let's look at the shape first and then I'll explain that. Um, so a weak base and a strong acid, the equivalence point, yeah that was it. Um, this is the equivalence point right here. So that um, your equivalence point here is always going to be slightly less than 7 because it's the same thing. At the equivalence point, the only thing left to influence the pH is going to be the weak conjugate acid of um, the base that you were titrating in the first place because all of them will equal each other out. Okay, I know it's a lot. We're going to do lots of practice problems. Read the book um, and we will get there.